Shalom, shalom, sisters. First and foremost, before I get started, I want to give all honor and glory and praises to the Most High God of Israel. Koho Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All praise to the Most High for another day in this truth and another day to magnify the name of the Lord. And this video has really been on my spirit just to try to move in the spirit of being disciplined. It's something I'm working on. The Lord is working on me now. The Lord is working on me. Let's just say that. So this was very edifying to me. It cut me up through the spirit. Uh, Lord willing is helpful to sisters. If y'all are struggling um, with staying disciplined or, you know, being consistent. Hopefully this is helpful. Whether it's with reading or praying or fasting or even just doing household duties and you know whatever it is because you know whatever um we set our hand to do we gotta do it all our might and i'm gonna get that this is the book of ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10 whatsoever thy hand findeth to do do it with thy might for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. So, we know that this truth is our life, according to Deuteronomy 30 and 20. So, we got to make sure that we're doing this thing with everything in us, with our might, with our strength. There's going to be times when, you know, we got to stay up a little later so we can read. There's going to be times where, you know, you're going to have to consistently put in the work for our salvation putting our brick in constantly 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 so we got to give it our all strive for this truth unto death Sirach 4 and 28 because once we in the grave you know that's it you know or whenever your how shy comes back that's it you know we can't we can't take it back you can't oh lord hold on let me go back and try to read my chapter no so we got to take this grace and use it. And use it, use it, use it. Use this time wisely to get what we need to get done. And I'm going to get a couple foundational precepts for this lesson. And I'm going to get Proverbs 31, chapter, come on, chapter, verse 27. Classic. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Plain. It's plain. We gotta look to the we gotta look well to the ways of our household. So, you know, being consistent in sweeping every day, mopping every day, or you know, folding the clothes or you know, whatever. Everybody's household is different. You know your household better than anybody. So you know what the things that you need to get done. You know what things get dirty quickly. You know, you know what things that, you know, might be need need to be done daily, weekly, or monthly. You can try to be better for the most high also by helping your household. And staying busy is better than being idle. Because it says right here, eateth not the bread of idleness. So we can't be laying around all day. And nothing is getting done. Because women, you know, we be, being keepers at home. We got we to gotta make things shake. Because if we don't do it, then who's going to do it? If we don't put in the work for our salvation... First and foremost, nobody else is going to do it for us. So we got to read. We got to pray. We got to study. We got to do all these things that are necessary. And some ways to be disciplined, you know, setting alarms, setting alarms to pray, setting alarms to read, you know, having precepts come to your phone and re in your reminders, you know, being intentional with, you know, setting time aside for the most high whether that's you know you're waking up early whether you're staying up late whether you you know just listening to some praise music in the car on the way to work 
school, you know, running errands, whatever the case is, you know, whatever, whatever. But just being intentional and setting that time aside because, believe it or not, the most high appreciates that. You know, you're being intentional and like, okay, I want to better my relationship with the most high. I'm going to set aside this time, which is better than no time at all. Or time you could have put, you don't want it to be, you know, the time you could have put into reverencing the most high or giving alms, whatever the case is, doing something for the ministry. And you on social media, you're on social media for three hours, but you only gain the most high two minutes of your time. We gotta start being more intentional. And also, so I can. But setting that schedule and a routine is gonna be best for most people. I'm not gonna say everybody, because everybody can't really move off of a set schedule routine because you know our lives might be busy every day might look kind of different especially you know you got little children whatever the case is but if you can set a general schedule that might help us as well in being disciplined so let me get ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18 by much slothfulness the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands the house droppeth through. So we got, we got to keep these busy hands, busy hands. We cleaning, we cooking, we reading, praying, we tending to the children of Israel, teaching them, bringing them up in righteousness, Lord willing. You know, we, 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 we getting to work through the Spirit. I'm um, praising the Most High. So... When we're slothful, when we're not being disciplined, because that's ultimately what it is. Because if you're not a disciplined person, if we're not moving in the spirit of being disciplined, we're not moving in the spirit of being consistent, then we could fall victim to an idle spirit. And we do not want that. We don't want that at all. And let me get uh, another precept. Chapter 5, verse 1. Verse 13. Okay. And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also in busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. See, when we got too much time on our hands, that's when stuff starts slipping up. We start chilling too hard. Now, next thing you know, you kind of binge watching. And I'm talking to myself as well. You know, you kind of on the phone all the time. Or you might be, you know, texting all the time. Next thing you know, you ain't got nothing done. The whole day then just escaped you. Because you are being idle through the Spirit. And Lord forbid this happens to any one of us where we're idle. And now we wander from house to house. And we, at this is the house, at this person's house, whatever. And we gossiping and busybody but not the good busybody speaking things that we are not we don't lord forbid lord forbid and i'm gonna get just another precept on staying busy and cyber you get cyber chapter 33 and verse 8 27 and read send him to labor that he be not idle for idleness teacheth much evil. Idleness teaches much evil. It's plain. It's plain. So, another thing I want to say is discipline comes from the Lord. First and foremost, nothing is of us. We know that nothing is of us. And discipline ultimately comes from the Lord. We got to be praying for discipline and praying that the Most High and grants it to us. And grants us a uh, consistency in good works. And we get Job chapter 36 and verse 10. It's talking about the most high right here. He openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. Plain. 
discipline. The Most High is the one that opens our ears to discipline. He's the one who instills it in our spirit to be busy, to, you know, build up our houses in righteousness, to build up one another in righteousness, to build ourselves up through the power of spirit. How about you now? By praying, reading, fasting, by doing the works of the Lord. All these things come from the Lord. You know, we already know we got to keep these laws such commandments. But we're going to keep saying it. We're going to keep saying it. We got to keep these laws such commandments. And when we keep the commandments and we're diligent to keep the commandments, that also helps us to be disciplined. We got to have discipline to keep the commandments as well. Because keeping these commandments is not, not a light thing. It's not a light thing. And we got to be disciplined to the Spirit by keeping the commandments. But we also got to be disciplined in other areas of our lives as well. So we can be well-rounded and disciplined in all aspects. Um, it, Syrac 32 and 14. And it reads, Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline, and they that seek him early shall find favor. So we got to fear the Lord. We got to fear the Lord. We want discipline from the Lord. It comes from fearing him. What's fearing him? Keeping his commandments. Keeping his commandments is how we show that we fear the most high. Reading. Saying that time to read, to pray, to study. That shows that we fear the most high. That we want to be occupied in his scriptures so we don't go astray. So we don't go into that idol spirit. Um. Of course, fleeing wickedness to be able to receive discipline in our spirit. Because we know the beautiful spirit of discipline is not going to dwell in a wicked vessel. It's just not. It's just not. And it doesn't make sense for it to. This is the wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Pun. We can't be deceitful. You know, you're working deceit. Being deceitful with brothers and sisters. The Most High is not dealing with that. And the Holy Spirit discipline will not dwell in you. You got to remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And we know that knowledge, wisdom, understanding comes from the Most High. How about Shemir al And we got to be righteous. What's righteousness? From the law of statute commandments. It, always, it all falls back to keeping the law of statute commandments. Everything comes full circle. All praise the most high. And wisdom will be given unto us if we desire discipline. We got to desire it. It's not just going to come just because you pray. You got to desire, yearn for discipline. Yearn to be better. Yearn to be that strict, I don't want to say, hmm. That strict, firm woman. You know? Dependable. People, people should look at us and be like, yeah, she, that sister, she on her stuff. She's not playing. She's going hard for this trip. Ultimately, we're not doing it for men. We're doing it for the most high, of course. But even, for example, like, people in the military, they yearn to serve this wicked government so they what are they doing they going through the boot camps the intense boot camps they you know carrying heavy stuff on their back walking through trenches and they doing a million push-ups and having to put on seven layers the whole outfit camp gear in about 10 seconds you know they getting spit on and talk to like you know they ain't nothing all for what this carnal stuff carnal carnality but they're disciplined they're disciplined they stand in formation they do as they're told we got to be just like that but in this truth in this walk being disciplined in our housely duties sisterly duties all of the duties <laughs> all of them through the prosperity of how about you out shy and i'm gonna get wisdom of solomon 6 and 17 for the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. This is talking about wisdom. It's talking about wisdom. That her is wisdom. For the very true beginning of wisdom 
is the desire of discipline. And the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto the most high. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. And we know wisdom and discipline that comes together. Because if you if you got wisdom, you're going to be disciplined. If you got discipline, you're going to be more wise. Because you're consistent. You're consistent. You're keeping the laws. You're staying incorruptible. Everything just ties in full circle. All praise the most high. And I'm going to get Syrac 4 and 17. And it reads, for at the first, she, there go that she again. Talking about wisdom. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Then she will return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. So we can't forsake wisdom. We can't forsake, you know, these scriptures and the Most High telling us to be disciplined in the spirit, not to be given over to the spirit of idleness, not playing into Satan's tactics to get comfortable and lazy and just content with not doing anything. Then wisdom won't walk with us. Wisdom not going to want to have anything to do with us. And we don't want it to be like, you know, we so idle and so out of it and so inconsistent that we're going to be judged judged bring judgment being brought upon us because we're not doing what we're supposed to do in this truth doing our duties as women as wives as mothers whatever the case is you know because the most high y'all bash me shy he's gonna try us through the spirit he's gonna try us through the spirit and gives us tests like oh, okay you know is she gonna read today is she gonna pray today is she gonna fast this week you know whatever the case is we will be tried and obstacles will be thrown our way nonetheless and distractions by saying of course are expected and but wisdom is a precious precious thing and discipline is needed to achieve it so we must know that, you know, we want knowledge, wisdom, understanding. We're praying for these things. We got to be disciplined. So you must know that this walk is not easy. We know this walk ain't easy. I'm going to get the classic 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Let's say should give an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The classic. We're not ignorant of saying his devices. We know that he's going to want us to be lazy chilling all day we gotta rebuke that we gotta get up you know drink your little energy drink do what you gotta do you know have an accountability partner you know call somebody up hey you want to read with me sis you know read to your children or whatever clean up while you're listening to a video boom that's why that's two birds with one stone right there as they say killing two birds with one stone Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Satan wants us to fail. He wants us to be inconsistent, not with discipline, without knowledge. He wants that. And I'm going to get a couple more precepts just playing into this lesson. And then I'm going to close up. It's Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So we can't give into this wicked flesh. We got to keep our hearts with all diligence. We got to know like, okay, I want the kingdom. I got to be diligent. I got to be on fire for the Lord. I got to do what I'm supposed to do. Because this life is temporary. We don't got a lot of time. I'm going to get Proverbs chapter 12. Verse 24, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. 
Let's look into the definition of tribute. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Under tribute. Forced service. Serfdom. Enforced payment. See that? Discomfited. I'm not asking you to translate. Make someone feel uneasy or embarrassed. So if we're being slothful, we're going to be made felt to feel uneasy or embarrassed. We don't want to be embarrassed. Nobody likes to feel embarrassed. So we got to be diligent. You don't want to be that sister, you know, everybody done, everybody else on fire and they get to you. Hey, sis, did you read this week? Did you pray? Did you, you know, whatever? Did you get anything done this week? What did you do that was productive? You go, oh, I didn't really, I don't, I didn't really do nothing. No, that's embarrassing. That that makes you feel uneasy. It should make us feel uneasy in the spirit. Yeah, Hebrews. Look at Hebrews chapter six and verse ten. I'll read through twelve. For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of him, of them, Slachia, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So this is the goal right here. We are doing everything that we that we can to be diligent to be disciplined in the spirit and we know that the most high is not gonna forget our work and our labor us going hard the most high is not gonna forget that the angels are watching us 24 7 so the most high knows what we're doing this work is not in vain it's not in vain and if we want to inherit the promises this is what we got to do this is what we got to do Okay, let me get Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So all this being disciplined, all this, you know, putting in this work, if we faint not, if we keep going to the very, very end and not be weary and get lazy and weak and just say forget it we shall reap the benefits we shall reap the benefits that said the lord i'm gonna get second peter i'm gonna go to eight and i'm gonna read ten and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord yahweh shai mashiach wherefore the rather Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So there's nothing we can lose for being disciplined in the spirit. There's nothing we can lose. Nothing. A couple minutes off of your sleep, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Social media, it'll be there. It's okay. Clean up the house, sis. Study with that sister, sis. Do you know? Do something. Make our calling and election sure. These are the things that we have to do. We gotta add onto our virtue, add onto our faith, add onto our knowledge, add onto temperance, being temperate in spirit, 
add on to our patience, add on to our godliness. How can we better keep the commandments? Add on to our brotherly kindness. Add on to our charity, giving alms. It's always something that we can be doing. And these are the things that help us to be disciplined. If you always got something to do, then you should be disciplined. You should be disciplined. You always got something to do so that, you know, there's no idleness, no idle hands at work. No idle hands at work, but, you know, you don't have no idle hands at play. Like, we got to truly just keep applying these precepts. All praise to the most high. Second Ezra, verse 13. Go to 54. For that, for thou hast forsaken thine own way and applied thy diligence unto my law and saw it. And this is just what we got to do. We got to forsake our own ways. Forsake, you don't want just to just chill out for the day. You know, I'm chilling for the week. I'm not doing nothing. I'm vibing. I'm vibing for the whole week just because. Forsake our own ways, forsake this flesh, and apply diligence unto keeping these laws, such commandments, unto studying the law, being fervent in good works, and seeking these things, seeking the things that are most high. And I'm gonna get Sarah. This is gonna be my last precept, my closing precept, y'all. Sarah 18 and 14. He had mercy on them that receive discipline and that diligently seek after his judgments. We got to diligently seek after his, the most high's judgments. And we want a good judgment. We want a good judgment. At the end of this, we don't want to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. We want to hear, good job, thou faithful servant. Good job. You were faithful. You were diligent, disciplined, and a good soldier. The good soldier of the Lord. And he has mercy on us. To receive that spirit of discipline. And we need as much mercy as we can get. So. All praise to the most high. Lord willing this was helpful. Call your Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I really needed this lesson. Lord willing it helped y'all. Lord willing we can continue to pray for more discipline. And. Um. Yeah, Lord, we just be better with being zealous and being focused in this faith. And Lord, will y'all keep enduring? I love y'all. Call y'all, Bashan, y'all, Shai, Brakathon, and Shalom.